I'm far away enough away from you that I can take that out so you can hear from me. Uh, and we are trying to get the PowerPoint going. You know, the first time in a while, and things mm -hmm. start going, what? I haven't turned it on here. Here we go. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. That is better. Okay. Yeah. First time things haven't gone quite as well as we would have hoped this morning. But we're here, aren't we? Yeah. Praise yeah. God, we are here yeah. inside. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and we started with, we were supposed to have balloons and it'd be real festive looking outside. Hasn't uh, happened. <laughs> But we are here. So, this morning, um, I do want to make sure that you remember the flu shot this week. And if you have not scheduled your flu shot, make sure you do that by calling the Council on Aging. It's going to be an important year to have that flu shot this year. Uh, much more, I mean, it's always important but much more so this year than in years past. Uh, to combat with the, the COVID and the flu shot together, it's going to be really important. So make sure you get your call on for that, or your call in for that, and let's see if we can't combat this thing. Uh, and I do want to remind you that we do need to keep our masks on throughout the entire service. I know I know no one dislikes them more than I do, but uh, we do need to do that. Uh, we've seen just this week as the president and many of our uh, leaders are coming down more and more with this, just how important these masks can be. And if I come any closer to any of you than where I am right now, I will be putting it on too. Uh, I know I'm farther away from any of you right now than uh, I could even stand down here somewhere and be farther away than is necessary, but if I come any closer than where I am, I will be putting it on. And have I left out anything? Is there any other announcements? Because like I said, it has been a morning. Have I left out anything that I should be telling anybody? Okay, let's open. Are you, are you seeing? Yeah. You want? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle has asked me to sing after William Bennett was here. <laughs> that doesn't seem quite fair. Such a talented musician. But I hope you enjoy the song to the glory of God. For those tears, I died. <laughs> Thirsty, 
you won't be denied. I felt every teardrop that in darkness you cried, and I'm here to remind you that for those tears I died. My heart and my soul. I know that without God I could never be whole. Savior, you opened up all the right doors, and I thank you and praise you from earth's humble shores. I'm so thankful I'm yours. Jesus said, Come to the water. Stand by my side, I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I felt every teardrop that in darkness you cried, and I'm here to remind you that for those tears I died, I'm here to remind you. That for those tears I cry. Let us pray. Oh God, we do thank you for bringing us here this morning. God, we thank you that we are able to be back inside of this sanctuary. God, we, we just thank you that this virus has moved on to the point that we can at least somewhat gather, that even though it's small numbers, that we can come together inside to worship you. And God, we, we do thank you that that is a privilege that we have in this country. And maybe over the past few months, we have realized just what a privilege it is that we can do that, where we know in so many places that people just can't ever come together. They can't ever openly come together to worship you. And God, we just thank you that, that we do have that privilege, that we can do that. We have that freedom. And God, we, we just thank you that we once again... I do not have that taken from us because of this virus. And God, we just pray that this virus will continue to just lessen and lessen. And God, that it will be just completely exterminated. And God, as, as Hal just sang about, we, we are so thankful that we are yours. And God, we are thirsty for you. God, we are thirsty for your touch in our lives. We are thirsty for your touch in our, our church. And God, we, we just are so, so thankful for you. Thankful that you have claimed us, God. We're thankful that, that we are yours and that you are always there for us. And God, we do lift to you this morning those who have been diagnosed with COVID this week in our government. We pray for our president. God, we pray for he and his wife as they fight this virus. We pray for your healing touch to be there upon them. For We pray for their recovery. And God, we, we pray that at this time while he, he is recovering, for that chaos that could be within our government, God, we just pray that it won't be, that it won't happen. God, we pray that the elections won't get any more out of control, that things will be handled there too, and that it won't put our country into any more of a crisis than we already are in. And God, we pray for our own senator, Tom Tillis, who also has been diagnosed with this virus. And God, we again just pray for his healing and recovery for him and for the other senators who have been 
uh, diagnosed and for Chris Christie and, and all of those who have been diagnosed and those who will be diagnosed in our leadership. God, we just lift them to you and pray to you for, for their recovery. And we just pray for all who have suffered with this virus. And God, we cry out to you, how long, oh Lord, how long will this go on? How long? Can, can we withstand this? We are all feeling its weight. God, we are all feeling its frustration. We are all feeling the effects of it. God, we are, we are all feeling just so weighed down. We know that there's, there's so many effects going on, that depression is on its rise, that, that people seem just kind of so short-tempered everywhere we go. And God, we just pray for your peace to come upon us. God, help us. Help us to endure this. Help us to endure it with grace, with your grace. God, give us a, a peace about it. And help us to trust in you, knowing that you are going to bring us through it. Knowing that you are right there with us. Thankful that we are yours. And that you are walking with us that you are there and God help us help us to really remember that your joy is there still with us may we be setting the example for those who don't know you that to have how to trust in you to get through these times of crisis and God we do pray for our country and for our society here as we are in a time of crisis and not just with this pandemic, but with the social unrest that we have in our country, the racial unrest that we have, the divisions that the election is causing. God, we are just in crisis. And we know that you are really the only answer to this crisis. We may look to others. We may look to political officials. We may look to those whom we might want to elect. But you are really the answer. You are the only answer. And may we turn to you. May we put our full trust in you as we look to the answers for this crisis, for all of the crises that's going on around us. And God, we pray for those this week who have lost loved ones. God, may you just be there. May they feel your presence there with them. God, may they feel your love and your comfort and peace there. And God, we, we know that there's so many other things going on. God, we know that there's illness. We know that those who are suffering physically, those who are suffering emotionally, and we just pray for your healing to be there upon them. And God, as we go into our worship this morning, we know that Satan has tried to thwart this worship this morning. Things have, have just gone wrong, it seems, at every turn. But yet, we are determined that we are going to worship you. We know that, that we are yours, and we are thankful that we are yours, and we are going to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Sunday. Okay, this day calls the church... The, the church universal, you know, not just the United Methodist, or, but the church universal. All of those baptized believers to, to come together to celebrate communion together, to celebrate our oneness as the body of Christ, as the inclusive church. And the day was first observed back in 1936. And we've been celebrating it ever since. And it calls us to remember that whatever background, whatever theological tradition, whatever denomination that we come from as Christians, we are one in Jesus Christ. And that as we celebrate Holy Communion, we are celebrating Him. You know, we're not celebrating anything we've done, but we're celebrating Him and that we are His. And today, first we look at the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, chapter, uh, verses 20 through 26, that says that my prayer is not for them alone. 
I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you and just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And then from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Verses 14 through 17. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We who are many, are one body, for we all share the one love. And then from Paul's letter to the Galatians. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are one in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, today, as it said, it's worth a day that's set aside to join with our brothers and sisters around the world to celebrate our oneness, to celebrate that we are here. And as we have gathered here this morning to pray, to worship, to lift up the bread and the cup, millions of our brothers and sisters around the world are doing the same thing. Now last night, while many of us were sleeping, the Christians in the Democratic Republic of Congo left their homes. They, they saw their pastors take bread in their hands and and here declared, this is my body. You know, in the Church of the Holy Resurrection in Jerusalem, they heard the words, this is my body. St. Paul's in London, this is my body. Churches and cathedrals across the United States this morning, pastors will be declaring, this is my body. This afternoon, in those thatched, Roof mission stations across the islands of the Pacific. You'll hear, this is my body. You know, throughout the world, the body of Christ in all nations and many languages are united this morning in celebration of Holy Communion. Yet, as we come together, we know that there are divisions, don't we? We know there's divisions. I mean, you only have to look at signs as you drove here this morning, church signs. You see, you know, that there's the United Methodists, there's Baptists, there's Presbyterians, Lutherans. You know, there's all sorts of different denominations that tell the story, we are a divided people. You know, we let all kinds of things divide us. You know, we let our politics divide us. We, we let race divide us. 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Although we're here a little earlier than that, but 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is the most racially segregated time of the whole week. You know, we're divided along economic lines. You know, we are divided along nationality and cultural lines. Christians argue over scripture, the way we worship, the way we do baptism. And even though we're celebrating, you know, Holy Communion as being united with our brothers and sisters, 
We don't do communion the same way, and it doesn't even mean the same thing to everyone. You know, some churches, like the United Methodist Church, we practice the open communion, which means that because we believe within the sacrament itself, we receive the grace of Jesus Christ, and His grace is available to all people. Therefore, we allow all to come to receive Holy Communion. And one of the most moving experiences I have had during Holy Communion was at another church that I had many years ago. There was a woman who had visited the church a couple of times, and the first time we had communion when she was there, she came up for communion, and she looked at we were doing it by intention. And as I handed her the piece of bread, she looked at me and she said, I don't know what to do. There was tears in her eyes. She said, I don't know what to do, but I want Jesus. You know, we all, we come not knowing sometimes even what it means. But we know we want to be His when we come. You know, some denominations don't allow you to partake unless you're a member of their denomination or their particular church. Some communion some communion served every week. Some is rarely mentioned. You know, John Wesley partook of Holy Communion several times a week, sometimes more than once a day. You know, there's differences in the methods. You know, some will have the, the little cups and the wafers. Most of us are doing that in these times. We have prepackaged cups and wafers. But before COVID, some still had the cups and wafers. Some had one cup, and you would dip the piece of bread in it. And we had all different kinds of methods. And some believe that communion is a symbol, just something we do to remember Christ's death. Some think that in the sacrament, as it is consecrated, that the elements, the bread and the, what would be really real wine in those traditions, change. And they actually become the body and blood of Christ. Now we as United Methodists, we're in between there. We don't believe that the, the elements actually become the body and blood of Christ. They don't physically change. But yet, his blood and his body are there. That he is there. His grace is a part of what we partake into our body. When we do take in that bread and that juice, just like the lady said to me, I want Jesus. We are taking Jesus in. You know, we Christians, we are divided in so many ways. So many ways. And yet, Jesus calls us to be one, to be united. He calls us to come, to be one, to be one through His body and His blood. You know, when Methodism came to the colonies and and the Methodists became its own denomination in 1784. It was just one. It was the Methodist Episcopal Church. And then they divided over the issue of slavery. And then years later, there was another group that wanted more lay representation at their annual conferences. And so there was another split. You had three denominations from that one. But you know what? We got it right in 1939. In 1939, we got it right. Do you know what happened then? Those three denominations came back together and formed the Methodist Church. 
despite some of them even still having the differences, their differences of opinions, they came back together and formed the Methodist Church. And then in 1968, we got it right again. Because the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren Church that had been a German-speaking Methodist church, they didn't speak German too much anymore, they came together to form the United Methodist Church. You know, we got it right some. We got it right. But then in the 70s, we began to fuss and fight over an issue that we're still fussing and fighting over and probably is going to divide us again. But this is the way the church works, isn't it? It's the way it is. We, we divide ourselves. Even though Jesus prayed, may they be brought to complete unity. We have division. We have divisions. And Jesus makes it pretty clear that unity is a necessity within the church. If we are going to fulfill our mission as the church, a mission of going to make disciples, we're going to have to have some unity. Paul's point to the Galatians is that divisions have no place in the church. The Galatians church was made up of former Gentile pagans who had joyfully accepted the message of Jesus Christ. They were baptized. They had experienced these dramatic manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But sometime after Paul had left, a group of Jewish Christians had shown up. And they were trying to persuade the Christians, those Gentiles who believed in Jesus, that they had to become Jewish before they could actually be a follower of Jesus. And Paul's response to this is, no, no. It's through your faith in Jesus that you're all children of God. In Christ. All human distinctions are done away with. All of those dividing walls, all of those labels that we like to put on people, separating them into us and them, they're all removed. They're all done away with through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. No longer us and them, because if we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're one. All divisions, gone. All gone. It doesn't mean we're all alike. We're going to have our differences. We're going to have differences in the way we do things, our thoughts, our opinions. You know, God gives us different talents. I wish I could play the piano like Michelle. I wish I could sing like her. But it ain't going to happen, okay? <laughs> it, just, it never has. But I have my own talents, things that I can do. God gives us all gifts, things that we can do. You know, we're, going, we're all different. And that's what makes it so beautiful. That we're all different, but yet we come together. You know, like a jigsaw puzzle. One piece on its own doesn't mean very much, does it? But when you put it together, it makes a beautiful picture. And our unity means that put together, we are a beautiful picture for Jesus Christ. A beautiful picture sharing His love, sharing His grace with those who don't know it. And you know what's going to, to get us past all of the divisions, what's going to, to get us past all of those things that bring, that just separate us, is the bread of life and the cup of salvation. 
that is what can overcome all of those differences. His body broken for us. His blood shed for us. That is what will unite us as one body. The body of Jesus. As we prepare ourselves this morning to receive his body and his blood, may we ask God to show us these divisions. May we ask him to show us the divisions to which we contribute, because we all contribute in some way to some division. May we ask him to show us, and may we pray for healing, for healing for us, for the ways that we contribute, and may we pray for healing for those things that do divide. Let us pray. And God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as we go, may we go knowing that we are one with our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the whole world. May we go sharing the love of Christ with all we need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.